I'm here with my friend Crystal today, and she's gonna show us some of these incredible critters they have. So what is this, guys? So this is called a prickly stick, and if you look at its legs, it has little, um, or what would you call it? It's got little pokies Steelers, on them. Yeah. Yes. So that can hold itself onto the branch. Okay. And if you look, so the main predator, the one that's going to eat them, are birds. Oh. So it's trying to protect itself. Look at the color. Yeah. He can camouflage himself. Yeah. He will drop, she will drop her tail like that. And it looks like a leaf. I was going to say, even her arms right there look yep. like leaves. They that do. is so cool. And if you look at her tail, do you see her tail right there? Oh, yeah. Ooh, she's she hanging off now. Tail, and so it looks like a scorpion. Oh, trying so to. So a bird would not want to eat a scorpion, would it? No, not at all. That would sting there their we mouth. Go. Yes, she um, she has little tiny wings, so she doesn't fly. Um, and she eats vegetables, so she will she won't bite or she won't sting. That is so cool. That is one of the most unique critters I've ever yes, seen. and she's from Australia. They live about a year. Okay, another critter from down under. Wow. There we go. We have a lot of friends in Australia, and I just love learning about oh, that continent. Fantastic. Wow, I see you've Would got you a like lot. To of... See some more? Absolutely. Okay. Some of these we can't take out. I see a sign right there that says "No touchy." No touchy. Yes. <laughs> so what is this guy? This is unique. This guy. Wow. This is a type of beetle. This is called a Hercules beetle. It's part of the like rhinoceros type beetles. Family. Okay. Yeah, you can see him there. He will fly, so we're gonna kind of keep an eye on him. <laughs> Don't fly he up at me, buddy. He doesn't talk. He doesn't. He doesn't move a whole lot. Now you see his big claw right here. Mm -hmm. That's not used to sting or to catch anything. What it's used for is. They, the different, the, these beetles fight each other to see who is the boss. Oh, okay. So he will use this long neck thing. I got it. That's kind of like the antlers on a deer. Exactly. They're trying to play the macho man That's game. That's right. This is so cool. It actually looks like a crab's claw. It does. Now, they're very good. They can carry things in those claws. <laughs> up from 30 times to 100 times their weight. Wow, that's impressive because so, he looks like he actually weighs a decent amount. Yeah, and so they're like ants. Remember, you've probably seen ants that can carry large amounts. Yeah. Um, it's the same thing with these beetles. That is so cool. Yep. Wow, and it was called a Hercules beetle? Yep. A Hercules like Hercules. Beetle. Hercules, Hercules. yeah, man. I like yes. it. <laughs> that is the so Hercules. cool. Yes. Okay. What's it like working at the bug zoo? Oh, it's such fun. I really enjoy them. <laughs> I've learned so much about the bugs and learning that how they help us in our environment. That's what I like to learn because a lot of things look yes. creepy and crawly and kind of scary, but in all actuality, we don't have to interact with we them. Don't. We just leave them alone we and don't. they're actually really good for our environment. And this is probably one that we're familiar with, the tarantula. And yeah. I think that that's a scary creature, but it really, it will not go after you. It will, it will sting you if, if you bother it a right. lot, if you're in their habitat. But these will live up from 10 years as males or 30 years as a female. So I had no well. idea a spider could live that yes. long. That is so cool. And I've actually found these in the wild out in West Texas. Uh -huh. We have some, well, we have a lot of big spiders here in Houston, right? But most of those are wolf spiders. Yes. yes. These yeah. are so cool, look. And he's got eight arms and legs, just like every arachnid. Yep. But wow, he almost looks as big as a crab. And you see it's kind of furry. Mm -hmm. So if it is threatened, it can kind of extend those, those that hair and, and defend itself. Sort of like a porcupine can oh. extend its needles like that. It's the same thing with, with the um, with the tarantula. Well, I think he looks like he's doing a great job right where he's at. <laughs> and actually, this one, 
they um, is a very friendly one. They take him out. He's used to people, you know, being around. I tell you him. what, Miss Crystal, I will We're take your word for that. it. I, I trust you, and I know you're telling the truth. But We're not uh, do woo. That. <laughs> this one is a. This is a scorpion. Oh wow! But it looks different. That is a different looking scorpion. He doesn't have that weird, scary looking tail. Yep. So what does his tail look like? It kind of looks like a like a bulb. Yep. Yep. And what about this part at the very end? Ooh, like an antenna. Yep, it looks like an antenna, doesn't it? This one is called a whip scorpion because his le does, the back sort of looks like a whip, does it? Where you yeah. Can, and again, it's a defensive type of thing. This guy will eat meat, will eat other insects, worms, that type of thing. Ooh. And they're actually using their whip more as a defensive. It, okay. It could sting you, but it won't kill you, but it might hurt. Yeah. Ooh. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to find out either okay. way. I like scorpions, and they're really cool and an important part of the environment. But like a lot of scary things, kind of like snakes. Yeah. I, you know, there's good snakes. There's people say there's bad snakes. They're actually all really they're good all, snakes. Yes. We just leave them alone and let them do their thing. And here's these are from Madagascar. Ooh, I've heard about these guys before. The hissing cockroaches. Mm mm mm. Go. Wow, that's a big one. <laughs> Those are see, really big. And if you look at them very closely, there's little bugs on top of them. Do you see those? Can you see the little tiny bugs on top of Ew, them? Ew, I do see some things yeah. moving around on top and of them. And those actually help. They help the hissing cockroaches and the, co the cockroaches then transport them. So they kind of are helpful to each other. Okay, kind of like a lamprey on a yeah, shark. Yes. And you can touch one if you'd like to. Hmm. <laughs> well, maybe. I don't, I don't, you know, normally I wouldn't go touching cockroaches, but since you put it that way, okay. maybe I'll just okay. try. One maybe finger, I'll just try. Yeah, one finger on the outside. Hey. Look at that. Yeah. It feels just like a crab. It does. All right. Well, now I can say I touched a hissing cockroach. Okay. That's enough for me for you today. Didn't hear it hiss. <laughs> no, I don't it's need to hear it hiss. Hard to hear it hiss. <laughs> that but was they so will eat cool. eat just about anything. Wow. Well, Miss Crystal, thank you so much yeah. for showing us these critters. Thank you. And you have all kinds of displays yes, yes, of yes, different yes. critters so, here. This is looking at how different. So we know that a butterfly goes from an egg to a caterpillar to a cocoon or pupa and then to an adult. So it goes through four different stages, meaning it has complete metamorphosis. It changes completely. Yeah, just like in the book, The, the Hungry, Hungry Caterpillar. Exactly, exactly. That and is these, so these you can see here goes from an egg to just a t like a small grasshopper. And so, then to a big old yeah, grasshopper. Yeah, so it's not going through that many stages. Okay. And then this one goes from an egg to a nymph to a cicada. Now you might be interested over there, these are bugs that are beneficial to us. Okay. So I'm always curious about bugs that are beneficial to us. So all of these, are ones that we need in our environment because they're they're going to help us balance, you know, our ecosystems. All of these are helpful. They may eat things like mosquitoes. Ooh, those really are important. Like, Let's get more of would those. Really like to see those. Harmful this right here, a honeybee. You know? Now we filmed with an actual professional beekeeper oh, and we wow. got to see inside the hives and I know how important they are to us. Yep. And we need to do a lot to protect them because they're in danger right exactly. now. Exactly, exactly. But this giant hornet wasp, uh, you, you need to tell me I how that's know beneficial. How that's helpful, <laughs> but I know that, that it does help, they are beneficial. That's like saying I know poison ivy has a good that's place right. somewhere but, in the environment, but I wish but we didn't I have it. Take, I don't want to. <laughs> mess with it. All right. Okay. Well, Miss Crystal, thank you so much. I really yes, appreciate it. It was you. a pleasure meeting you, you today. Come. All right, cowboys and cowgirls. Wow, what an adventure learning about all those bugs with Miss Crystal here at the Houston Museum of Natural Science. And like she said, their huge butterfly exhibit that you can kind of catch a peek of up there is going to be reopening in March, and I can't wait to get back here and see it. Maybe we could film that sometime so you guys can see it too. 
Anyways, what a cool time we've had. I hope you had a great time because I was smiling the whole time, even when I touched that cockroach. Time to go wash these hands. But until next time I see you, yee!